This video was originally presented as part of a tutorial on ways to approach efficient modeling at the 2016 No Magic World Symposium. Thank you to No Magic for granting permission for a wide public distribution of this content. And I encourage you to consider attending a future No Magic World Symposium if you have interest in their products. There are a number of speakers that are featured, invited, uh, and present, as well as the No Magic staff. And it's a great way to learn about No Magic's products and help advance the state of the art of model based systems engineering. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. In it, we'll discuss some of the tips and tricks that I have found that have allowed me to model in Magic Draw more efficiently. Some of these techniques may be new to you, some may be familiar, but I hope that uh, at the end of the tutorial you felt that it's been time well spent. So, with that, I'd like to just speak for a minute about overall modeling philosophy. When you model, you need to understand what information the subject matter experts or team members that you serve are interested in obtaining, and you need to figure out the best way to place it into the system model so that it's readily accessible for later retrieval. One of the most difficult challenges we face as modelers is breaking up the document-centric thinking of our colleagues, and we need to show them that the system model can be a trusted repository that allows us to store and later retrieve the information that they care about, often in new and interesting relationships that allow them to make better informed engineering decisions. So with that, we'll take a look at this model that I'll be building out during this tutorial. It will also be made available to you afterwards for your uh, examination. And I hope that, uh, again, it helps you see some of the things that Magic Draw can now do as of 18.3. So for starters, uh, one thing that I really insist on when I model is that we document pretty much everything. Now, that may or may not be applicable for every element. Uh, you know, perhaps a connector, it's not worth documenting. You know, if it's a USB connector between, uh, you know, component A and a computer, uh, if you know what the ends are, you know what it's connecting. You know, there may not be a lot of value added there. So for that reason, I say naming is optional. You should only name things if it's really adding value and helps you find that specific component later. But on the other hand, I think documentation should be more widely used. And so I'll go to this tables and matrices package I've created. And I basically have created a table here that shows all the operations uh, that I've created in this model so far, notionally. And I've exposed the documentation field, which allows me to uh, fill in information. I just have some notional text here. Notice that down below here in the lower left, we have the documentation tab, and you can expose that all the time. And any time that you click on an element in the specification tree, you can go ahead and update it. And uh, that will, of course, update live for us there as well. So we can go ahead and paste in a few of those. So again, I really encourage you to name things very well, especially functions, blocks, use cases, other elements of potential contention. There was a case when I was supporting a client where a team had a very lengthy uh, debate over an activity diagram, and I paused and pulled up the documentation for the function, the call operation that was under debate. And it turns out that the two teams that were collaborating via WebEx basically were from geographically dispersed locations, and they defined that function very differently. If we hadn't taken the time to document it with team A when we created it, there would have been no opportunity to surface that with Team B and provide that definition so rapidly and uh, unambiguously. So again, take the time to document things as often as possible uh, when it's a worthwhile element. The other comment I would make is keep in mind the value of the generic tables and the dependency matrices. Those are probably my two most used table types or, or diagram types because they are so generally useful. And again, we'll go through more of how I use them as we proceed through this uh, tutorial. So again, here's a list of functions and uh, documentation. You know, if it's got a method that we can drill down, uh, it's now exposed here as well. Uh, and so again, choosing the show columns wisely and picking uh, the columns of interest makes these very useful, particularly when we export them to Excel for subject matter experts to do later post-processing and sorting.